Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to the 2021 pre-season meeting uh, for track and field. Um, I'm head coach Nick Culver. Uh, this is my third year coaching uh, for track uh, as a head coach. I've actually coached for seven years now in track and 14 with cross country um, as distance coaches or coach for um, track and then as assistant coach for uh, cross country. Um, so what I was going to do today is go over some things about the upcoming season. Um, some things have changed. Um, just to clarify some things for you guys so you're not left in the dark about where we're at currently um, as we approach the mandatory practice start date. So um, this PowerPoint is very similar to what I've shown in the past. Um, just because my philosophy and beliefs do not change really at all. Um, there are some things I change up, but um, I truly believe in uh, the, the core values of what I coach and stand for. So um, first of all, uh, some ways that uh, you can stay in contact is um, through my Twitter account. I know a lot of you people don't have Twitter anymore, students don't have Twitter anymore, but um, it's probably there more for your parents um, to give like accolades to people that have good races or just good things happening or just giving heads up about stuff. Um, probably the easiest way to stay informed is um, through the GroupMe. Um, last year we did Remind app, but we were going to before our season got canceled. Um, but uh, you can use this GroupMe uh, link. Uh, you'll have it in a handout um, in Google Classroom, so you don't have to like you know do it right now. But it's in there in Google Classroom. Um, so one thing that changed actually is this year we are using Google Classroom. Um, to, instead of me printing off all this stuff, and then you know I don't know how many times there's like about 20 papers just left after uh, practice. Um, I thought it'd just be easier if I just post everything in Google Classroom, so you can instantly look it up. Um, there and on your phone. Um, so I'm planning on keeping this updated throughout the year um, or season. Um, so like um, schedules for the week, um, you know, the rosters for meets and things like that would be put in here every week, you know, and you can easily look at it and go over it yourself um, when I post it in Google Classroom. Um, so what I was gonna do really quickly though is um, show you a couple of things I already have in Google Classroom. Um, but before I do that, this is how our classroom looks. I'm kind of getting tired of seeing this. We have, I have seven periods and each one has a Google Classroom, but it is very beneficial to make sure that you guys have all the information um, basically in real time. Whenever I post it, you guys, I know you guys have the opportunity to, to get it. Um, so I did email invites to anybody that was planning on doing track last year, including the eighth graders that were planning on doing it last year. So um, if you did not get an invite or you know somebody that didn't get an invite, um, please just have them contact me so I can actually get them loaded in Google Classroom and get them on the roster um, because it's the easiest way to get informed uh, about what's going to be happening soon. So, um, so I made an announcement already. Um, I also posted three uh, materials I'm going to go over really quick, the handouts I usually hand out at this meeting. Um, so I even have the PowerPoint I was just showing a little bit ago. Um, so the first thing I was going to mention is the track and field schedule. It's a little bit less this year. There's two lesser meets, um, but I'm planning on filling those two meets or two dates up with different meets. Um, but you know, a lot of things have changed since last spring um, about what we can and can't do. Um, so you know, right now, some of these, like even the Wayne invite, is kind of on hold right now just because usually they have about 80 teams that show up to that, and I don't know if the state's going to actually be okay with that. So uh, some of this stuff could change, but this is a Google Doc, so it does change. I'll change it up here and you guys will see like instantly about the change. Um, talking about change and determinations about what's happening in the season, the state has still not given us any guidance about how the se spring season is gonna look like. Um, that's part of the reason why I waited so long to have this meeting because I thought there'd be a lot of answers or questions that, or answers to the questions I had, um, but they simply aren't there yet. And I had to get to a point where I had to have this meeting to get you guys informed. Um, it's so up in the air right now when it comes to certain things, like even the state meet, it was usually at Jesse Owens Stadium in Ohio State. It's not happening there this year, and they have no um, plan yet to where it's going to be held, and they're saying three different locations. Um, so, But they don't have no, any idea where they're going to be at yet or how the format's going to look like. So just kind of keep you informed about that and updated. I mean, they're still way behind about where they're supposed to be right now. Um, also, uh, we are actually D1, both guys and girls. Uh, there was a strong possibility that this year would be at four divisions, and it was going to happen, but um, Dale Gabor, who is the head of 
track and field for OHSSA, who's basically the one that was promoting it, um, got hospitalized in October. And he's been um, unable to do anything um, when he's been hospitalized. So basically, they had to table it for this year. But they're saying it's almost going to happen <laughs> next year because it would easily make up a lot of money that they lost after um, canceling the spring season last year. Um, so that's just kind of give you an idea about where we're at with all this stuff right now, too. Um, but as you can see, um, a lot of this, the meets are very similar. Um, we did switch up. Um, we're going to Springfield instead of Vandalia because Vandalia is only having a quad meet, which is basically four teams, and we weren't invited, which basically I don't care. Um, so the competition wasn't that good. So switching it up to Springfield, um, they're part of our MVL league, so it'll be a good change in scenery for that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is um, our home meets. We only have two this year. Before I was a head coach, we actually had like seven or eight. And it, was, it just seemed like every meet, the, the athletes were just simply always working on stuff. Um, they really couldn't compete because they were always like helping out concession stands and things like that. Um, so on the two meets that we do have, though, we are requiring everyone to show up to those meets, even if you're not competing, because we'll need everyone to help out those meets, make sure they run smoothly. Um, and you can look at, at the home meets. There's only one on 424 and then also four, four, oh man, 413. There we go. <laughs> um, also, we might need help at the middle school getting, um, you know, having workers help out there. Um, but we're kind of planning also maybe the parents might be helping out more this year when it comes to um, our home meets. But I have to talk to Coach Stanberry about that um, as we get closer. Okay, so that's that. Um, also, the other handout I usually give out is our informational packet. Um, basically, I'm not going to go through all this, but um, you know, this has all the information about like the core values of the team. Uh, practices, if you weren't aware, are 3:30 to 5:15. If you are a football player, you can lift before you go to practice. Um, me and Coach Burbacher worked that out, um, and you'll be able to leave early because you should be done by 4:45 at the latest because everybody else will be going to the weight room. Uh, if we have it. Um, also, the, they have some guidelines about if you're absent one day and how to um, you know, notify me. Uh, main thing is don't notify me after the fact because uh, I'm responsible for you being there. And if you're not there and you don't tell me, then um, that's a problem. So um, we also got some things about um, meets um, and I'll go over about like bus departures and everything like that too. Um, and then some of the consequences of breaking the team rules. Uh, this is the varsity lettering. Um, I'm not gonna go over all this in detail, but um, basically there's three different ways to varsity letter um, and you can read through it. Um, so basically you have to meet these two standards like committing with a team, so not just like skipping practice. Um, also, um, you know, showing the core values or acting the core values of the team. But then the main one here is, um, earning 15 points in the varsity meets for the season or a total of 30 points in both JV and varsity meets. Um, participation in one postseason meet, so like league, district, regional, state will automatically give you a varsity letter. Um, also, then we have qualifying standards. Like for example, my first year coaching, we had a lot of athletes um, in distance that were running this right here, sub this. Um, and really there, it was like kind of situated where, actually the year before I started um, being the head coach, um, there's like five or six guys that were running sub 1045, but they didn't varsity letter because they weren't in most varsity meets. Um, and that's not right because sometimes you have more people that are more um, like heavy in a certain event, um, but it doesn't mean that they should not get a varsity letter if they're actually, um, you know, r running or competing at a varsity level in almost any other team or any other year. Um, so these three, um, it's actually worked pretty well with the varsity lettering. Um, I think it gives everybody opportunities to they want to try to get one, they know what they need to do. Um, the bus departures, you can see there's a lot of question marks still here on the bottom part because we're still so far away. Um, MBL, I'm not even sure what we're getting hosted this year. I, I, last year was at Troy and I'm pretty sure they're going to host it again, uh, but we have to wait and see. Um, but this will change as we go as the year progresses too as well. And this is kind of more for um, the, per, the people in charge of the busing system here in TIP too as well. Um, apparel store, um, I think we're going to be changing to a different company. So I, when I have more information about that, I'll make an announcement about that. Um, and then here's some important leaks that I already showed you guys just a little bit ago too as well. All right, so back over to the slideshow. Um, we have a couple new coaches this year. 
Um, we have Haley Dunn, Coach Dunn. Uh, she helped out with cross country the past two years. She's a Wright State grad who um, actually competed for cross country and tra track, and she was their top runner. Um, at phenomenal um, with knowledge that she has and just a phenomenal person. And, like, I'm just super excited that she's on board. Um, she's going to take more of the distance and mid-distance role um, because right now uh, we still don't have a throws coach. And my um, expertise in throws is very limited, um, just being honest. Um, you know, I'm more geared towards distance and then kind of rely on a lot of the other coaches to be the experts. But I am going to do everything in my power to read up on stuff. I, mean, I know the, all the basics and everything, but um, also we're looking for um, some of our more experienced throws uh, athletes to step up a little bit too this year. And I know they will. Um, one thing I will mention when, when it comes to that, um, Jake Rollin, who graduated last year, when he was a junior, um, we did, to be honest, like we were kind of struggling. We were short one coaching in and the hurdles, hurdlers actually struggled. Um, you know, or we thought they would struggle. Um, but Jake, his junior year, he actually made regional finals and almost broke the school record his junior year um, with very minimal coaching. And his dad came up to me and I, you know, he always knew I was going to be honest. And he's like, I don't understand how he's doing so much better this year. And I said, really, it's because he took ownership of his own training. Um, and he communicated with us when he needed help. And, um, you know, he basically was in more positive mindset. And that was, that's what caused him to do a lot better. It wasn't really because of the coaches, it's just because he was owning up to the situation and took more ownership for his tr uh, training and knowing that coaches weren't watching, but he still trained as if they were. <laughs> so there's a lot to say about that when it comes to, um, you know, with this situation. And to be honest, guys, it's not an uncommon thing with track. Um, right now, we're, I'm getting like emails from Milton's coach say they're down to throws coach two. Um, one school is down three coaches, <laughs> so they only have two. Um, so it just thinks how this happens sometimes, but I'm still working hard to try to find that one person. Um, also, we have a new sprints and hurdles and long jump coach. He's gonna be helping out with long jumps sometimes. Uh, Jason Clendenning, he's actually a football coach here in TIP and was recommended by Coach Burbacher. And I'm, right when Burbacher recommends somebody, um, I'm instantly interested um, because he obviously knows the person well and um, you know he's vetted him and everything too. Um, I met Jason a couple of times and he is a phenomenal guy. I think you guys are absolutely gonna love him. Um, I know some of the freshman football players were excited when I told them that, you know, some of the varsity ones too. So um, he is actually a Bethel grad and he graduated um, about six or seven years ago. So he's a pretty, he's pretty young, um, but he did, he's a three sport athlete. Uh, he did football, basketball, and then track. So and he did sprints, hurdles, and long jumps. So he's very experienced about in those area, areas. So um, you, I know you guys will be in good hands with that. Um, then we have Everson, uh, Coach Everson back with pole vault and long jump. Um, and then we got Zirkle here with sprints and high jump. Um, just to let you guys know, be honest again, um, um, Zirkle, they're expecting another child in April. Um, so, you know, we're being really flexible this year due to the situation um, about everybody's going through and things like that. Um, you know, I want to make sure to keep some of these good people on board, even being a little bit flexible this year because, um, you know, I don't want to lose them. And I know they'll be there as much as they can for you guys. But I mean, he'll be there most of the time. Same with um, all the other coaches. Um, actually, before I move on, Haley Dunn is actually a part-time coach. Um, but knowing her work ethic, she'll probably be there more than half the time, if you know, probably three-fourths, if not more. Um, so just to keep that in perspective too as well. So not jump to conclusions that somebody's not there just because and they're not doing their job. <laughs> All right, uh, winter training. This is something that is really bumming me out this year. Um, you know, really, it's it's really going to have to be on your own this year. There's literally not enough room in the building for winter training, um, and I actually feel really uncomfortable having um, you know students running around the hallways and everything with teachers around. Um, you know, basically the cafeteria and everywhere else is being used uh, for the winter sports right now. Um, you know, it's really not a safe environment um, when it comes to people not wearing masks or social distancing. Um, but again, the ownership falls on you to do what you need to do right now. So um, most of you guys should know, um, you know, like getting the weight room, um, you know, running. Um, all of us could use some running. <laughs> um, also diet is so important right now too. Um, so keeping that in mind as we get closer and closer. Um, if you are questioning about what you need to do though, definitely communicate because I have no idea 
um, who needs help until they actually ask, especially when we have close to 120 kids out again um, for, the, for the sport. Um, you know, I wish I could know exactly what everybody needs, but it's hard. And, you know, especially when you don't see them most of the day because we're, you know, in a different classroom. So um, mandatory practice. A lot of people have been asking me about that. Um, it's actually February 22nd. That could change based on the situation. Um, you know, the gym availability is probably going to be extremely limited. And um, there's no way we're going to have 120 athletes inside the gym on the first day of practice. So if, we, if it's too cold out um, for, you know, and we don't have gym availability until like 7 o'clock or 6, I am not going to do that to you guys. Um, I, a lot of people I've talked to the past few years, um, we've agreed on 3.30 to 5.15. Um, and we have to hold by that. I'm not gonna start switching things up because I know some of you guys have to work and that puts every people in different spots. Um, I don't want to use up the time that you already committed to other things when you know I asked you guys to commit the times I already given you. I'm praying that um, you know we can have some gym time where maybe on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the guys will be in the gym if it's too cold out and Tuesday and Thursday, the girls, and then we flip until it's actually warm enough to get outside. Um, but when we get closer to that, I'll give you more clarification about that um, because right now it's still up in the air. It's still about a month away. And I want to give it a few more weeks before uh, we make that decision and talk to the other coaches as well. All right. So uh, before I move on to this part, um, let me make sure I got everything I needed to talk about. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, well, actually, the last thing I was going to mention before I got to this part um, be on the lookout for an informational sheet that I want you guys to fill out in Google Classroom and then submit as like an assignment. Um, it's basically just writing your name and what two events you're interested in. Um, so like your first choice and your second choice. And just so I have an idea of what to put you guys in when the season starts, okay? Um, right now, I think 80 people have responded to my track invite. Um, if you haven't, um, you know, just let me know that you're planning on doing track or not planning on doing track. Just let me know, okay? All right, so this is very similar as last year. Since we didn't have a season, I didn't really think we needed to change anything up, to be honest. Um, what is success? And this is a logo I think everybody's maybe starting to get tired of, but I'm a creature of habit. Um, and these are my core values when it comes to coaching and being part of a team. So um, the, this is basically an acronym. So the T represents um, teamwork. Um, obviously everybody knows what that means, being a good teammate um, and working together you know, um, being there for your teammates. Uh, the one I, and we haven't heard this that much this year because of PBIS, but it's not been like shoved down our throats this year, but um, integrity. It's very important, guys, to do the right thing when no one's watching. Um, I talked to you about what, that one athlete that he knew nobody was watching, but he still did what he needed to do. Um, it goes a long ways when you do, you're doing the right thing without needing to be recognized um, in life. Uh, the other P is perseverance. Or the first P is per perseverance. So, you know, even if you have a bad race or, you know, a bad jump or whatever, um, knowing that it wasn't your best effort and knowing you're going to come back and do better the next time. Um, you know, some of the most successful people are not smart people. It's basically people that persevere over adversary. Um, so that is a humongous, um, you know, th quality to have in life to be successful. Um, and the last one is pride, P for pride. Um, this one, um, I'm not talking about, you know, I mentioned and joked around last year about how we get to a meeting and we were all like smug and like strutting around, acting, acting like we're all that and everything. It's more about just having pride to be representing Tip of High School. And um, I personally love representing Tip. I love when other um, teams, they don't hate us, but they're like jealous because they see us like having fun, but then at the same time we crack down and do our, and do our job and, and we're successful. Um, and that's not just with like winning a meet or anything like that, but like, you know, reaching a goal. And like, you know, I love, um, you know, when a, an athlete reaches a goal that they've been trying to achieve for a while, um, you know, taking pride in that um, and what you represent, um, you know, for this, for the school district. Um, one thing I'll mention, you know, track and field is basically a whole, it, it gives you a snapshot of what this district is. Um, you have the football players, you have the soccer players, you got cross country, basketball, everybody um, that will, that's comes together to compete. And you really see what this school is about when you do that. Um, so keep that in mind when you actually are competing, what you're representing. 
And the last two, um, there's actually the two O's there. I know if you didn't see this last year, um, the O's are the circles. Um, one is ownership. Um, I'm really big about taking ownership for your successes, but more for your failures. Um, when you don't take ownership of your failures and you put on somebody else or put it on the wet weather or you're not owning up to it. Um, when you own up to something like that's even negative, you're gonna turn it into a positive eventually. So I'm really big about owning up to the, your failures as well. And then the last one, and this is the big one we're gonna talk about, the other O is opportunity. Um, it was pretty no brainer this year about what the one word I really wanted to focus on this year. Um, you know, when you lose a season, um, you start questioning a lot of things. You know, you go, like the, the, the opportunity that we missed last year with not having a season was totally out of our hands. A lot of times opportunities happen that way. Like there's a rain out or um, you get injured. Um, you know, you're not gonna have any regrets in life if you take advantage of every single opportunity that's presented to you. So even if you go to a small, you know, dual meet against Milton or Carroll, um, you know, knowing that that opportunity, even if you're in a slow heat, you have an opportunity to do something good for yourself and for the team. And you won't have any regrets. Um, personally, I have no regrets. I, I originally I did. Um, I regret it. There was only one regret I have. I regret that I um, acted the way I acted in high school in cross country. I really didn't apply myself, and I regret it to this day. Um, but again, I, that regret has turned into a positive thing because I now understand how important um, having every opportunity available and taking advantage of it. Um, so with that said, um, I do think we're going to have a season. I'm like 99, maybe 95 percent sure, because um, this has been ever evolving and everything. Um, but I can't wait to get out there and be around you guys um, personally. And I'm going to be 100 percent honest here. Um, before I get to this section right here, you know, when we didn't have a season in the spring, I was missing it a ton. I was like, like literally, I was writing letters to the seniors for their graduation I was literally had to like stop and because I got teary-eyed after each one even though the kids I really didn't know that well because they just came out their senior year um, and then it kind of went away because we hit the summer and then I started being around my kids a lot more and I was like started questioning a little bit like do I really want to coach I love track but is it like should I be there for more for my kids and literally when I asked myself that question I instantly knew what the answer was and it's because I was so far away from it, I started realizing that I literally would not know any of you guys, um, hardly any of you guys, because I wouldn't have you in class. And, you know, those connections and having the opportunity to be around you guys and coach you and know you're going to hopefully have a positive experience is so important, um, more important than any sport um, for me. Um, and track is just a little icing on the cake because I love track. So, um, Knowing there, I'm going to be there for you guys, and I'm going to be there to share your successes and your failures, and pick, try to pick you up. And your co knowing your other coaches are going to be there to pick you up too, and and celebrate with you, is the reason why we truly, I truly coach. I know the other coaches coach as well. Um, so, um, just want to let you guys know that. Um, so, <laughs> personally, that's the reason I haven't been going around, um, and and. Um, you know, pushing people to do track and everything because this has been such a changing situation that, you know, I don't know what people are going through even to this day when it comes to like since last March. So I don't want to really put extra pressure on them. But I want to let you guys know that. I want to be honest and hopefully you're not getting teary eyed after that one. So, all right. So, last thing, this is the same as last year. Um, the coaching staff is invested in you. You need to invest in the sport. Pretty obvious, right? Um, you know, like I said, Zirkel, he could easily say he didn't want to do it this year. Um, but he said it was a no-brainer. He, he definitely wanted to still coach, even though he's going to have two kids at home. Um, and I would really appreciate that. He wants to be there for you guys and, and be there for you and invest in you guys. So please do the same. Um, successful results are different for each athlete. Pretty self-explanatory. Not everyone can be a state champion. Um, you know, all I ask for you guys is to do your best. Um, work as hard as you can and be the best you can be. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, Coach Wooden is um is that quote and it's so true um you can't there's only one state champion right um but you will again have no regrets if you actually just do the best and be the best you can be and there it is i went and jumped ahead of myself <laughs> the last thing we want this to be fun but at the same time we also want to kick some in the mortal words of mr tipton angle side side um 
It was funny today. Somebody said, I do not look like a coach because um, I'm wearing a tie, you know, and I have kind of longer hair and everything. And I kind of laughed. I'm like, well, I am. <laughs> um, I don't think people that, that don't know me or see me when I'm coaching, they, they don't know that I'm really competitive. Um, and especially because I love um, representing TIP, being, being a D, small D1 school this year and beating some big, D2, big D1 schools too. Absolutely love that. Um, and I love seeing you guys have those successes too as well. So, um, so anyway, uh, that's all I got here. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything pops up for me, um, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Um, please let me know. You can email me or um, you can actually um, just see me in the hallway and pull me aside and ask me a question. Um, again, if you know anybody else that's planning on doing track that didn't do it last year, um, tell them to email me or just make contact with me so I can get them down um, on the list. All right. All right, um, look for that informational um, sheet coming out probably in the next couple of days, and I'll have a video coming up soon um, once I get more clarification about the upcoming season. All right, guys. See you guys.